Triple M Model Railroad. Like I have stated before, when I get the F3 finish, I will post the last video. And here it is. And right next to the F3 is actually my Santa Fe F7s, which I have brought out of um, storage. My beautiful F7s. And I actually got everything together for Harold's F3s. Um, actually, sorry, Harold. I said I was going to give you Katie Coupler's. I'm afraid I didn't do that. I actually did something a little bit different. I actually had taken the coupler from my F7 and put it on your F3. Now, the reason why I did that instead of the Katie's, um, like I was telling you before, is that one, the first set of Katie's were a little bit too difficult for me to actually really deal with. I need to get some kind of magnifying glass um, to actually see better um, because putting in those springs in the draft boxes are not fun. <laughs> they are very difficult to do. I just can't see. And second, the second Katie's that I've ordered for this model doesn't fit. Even though online on the Katie's website they suggested that you can use um, the Katie's for this um, particular locomotive which is I believe is Katie's number 148 and Katie's 146 but they do not fit they actually hit the trucks in the rear they're very you know, I, you can't really see it, but it does hit the trucks in the rear. I think the 148s, because the 148s um, draft box is quite long compared to the one that comes with it. So I don't know what, why, sometimes my mind is very slow. I, I, ha I hate to admit it. Um, but I was like, wait a minute, I got a bunch of F7s, and they should have the same... Um, flipping um, <laughs> couples with the draft box. Um, they are very similar. Um, they slightly different. The pin is slightly different. Um, if you know, if you're taking these apart, uh, this it does fit in there, but it's a little stiff uh, because the pin alignment is a little off. But other than that, it does work. And I wouldn't suggest. Um, running any consist or other engines with that in the in the front so that I wouldn't suggest as you're looking at these two locomotives actually really four uh, four prototypes they have two different decoders both by soundtracks and the F7 has the original tsunamis and I believe these tsunamis are the um, probably a, a higher revision than the um, actually if, if I guess if I make a guess um, these are probably a later revision it's not revision one decoders as far as I know, it's probably a, a later revision, like probably like revision two or maybe three, uh, maybe I don't know. Getting these to run correctly, that was a that was a chore. That was a big process, and they still doesn't, they still do not run the way I would like it to be, and it was very evident when I take them out of the box and run them for the first time in. Well, let's say several years. This engine haven't seen the light of day in several years. 
And the reason why I took them out of storage is because I'm going to actually change the decoders out um, for ESUs. Sorry, George. <laughs> but this goes to how well soundtracks have done with their decoders, what they have done. I can actually run them both. And you can probably see the difference. You can probably see the difference and see and hear the difference of the sounds uh, and the performance of the motor control. You know, obviously this one, the the tsunami twos are much much louder. I mean, this thing is really really loud. It actually drowns out this one, and I believe the the um, I think. I at the time I did set the the volume pretty high on these, so but this I mean forget it. I mean the amplifier processing power of these um, new tsunamis are like incredible. It's night and day. It is night and day. Now you're probably asking me why I am not going with tsunamis why I just get some tsunami tools and just slap them in there and call it a day well basically I want to build from an ecosystem just one ecosystem as opposed to many uh, tsunamis you you know you can run it in the various ecosystems and what I mean by ecosystems is the control systems that control these locomotives now I believe what runs tsunamis very well are NCEs and uh, Digitrax. Not too sure about MRCs. MRCs I remember was having MRCs were giving hell trying to program the old these old um, tsunami decoders. And you know I was so glad to actually get rid of it. You know, we had we sold it off to somebody. I don't remember who, but we had that's that was our original control, DCC control system. So it was a nightmare trying to program them. And when we got the start going to ESU, that was basically repeated again. <laughs> More of a nightmare. It was like these tsunamis were just not nice. Now I'm talking about the first ones. Now, as for the new ones, the new ones are much easier to program. They're much easier to program, and they work very well. Uh, still an issue with ESU programming them. I mean, you can't program them. It's a hit and miss. Um, basically, you can't read the decoder. Or you can't read the CVs on the decoder. You only can actually write to the decoders. And this is with the lock programmer. Now I don't know if another ESU uh, system would do this, but like I said, I wanted to actually, you know, just have one ecosystem, and that, you know, me, I prefer um, ESU products. And speaking of ecosystem and control systems, I finally bite the bullet. Well, then, I, then again, I'm buying everything else. I finally got myself a control cab. And this is it right here. It came in this week. And I am going to actually do a review on that. Not a review, excuse me. More or less how to use it. I mean, it's, I mean people have done reviews on it. So, yeah, this is it. So this basically completes my ecosystem that I like to proudly call it. Uh, the control system. Now, will it work well with tsunamis? Who knows? Um, but we're going to try that out. And we're going to see uh, how we can um, successfully program CVs with it. Um, but that will be on a later date. Um, by the way, since this is going back, I don't have any other tsunamis. Well, actually, do I do have one other tsunami? Um, I have to get it out of storage. 
and or I just test this. I mean, by that time, I don't know. I may just switch it out. Um, and switch the decoder out and put some um, ESUs in it. So this, the, these two locomotives are going to be my first project. The lights are going to get changed. Everything's going to get changed. All the electronics and lights and speakers and it's a, it's going to be a pretty big project for these two um, F7s. But I love my F7s, and I have four more of these bad boys um, that I have to upgrade, which is going to be quite expensive. I mean, I'm going to take my time with them. I mean, I I guess by the end of the year, all seven of them, hopefully, all seven of them will be up to date with the coders and lights and all. So, I keep my fingers crossed. So, without further ado, let's, let's run these. Let's run Harold's F7s, oh, excuse me, F3s. First, all right. First, I'm gonna set. Uh, excuse the squeaky table. I gotta get rid of this crappy table that I have. Uh, it has this tray that comes out. What you hear is the tray. The tray is just absolute garbage. Um, so it's supposed to be bearings, but and the bearings are all worn out. So, actually, I'm going to rearrange this room. Uh, that's one of the big plans this year. I mean, my room is like all discombobulated. No, I'm not really. It's not. Everything's like organized. So, the walls got to be redone. I, I attempted, not attempted, but I had skinned the walls some time ago, but I never got a chance to do anything. So, everything, all this stuff you see. Everything is all staged, ready to go for storage. All that's gonna go to storage. That dresser is gonna go to storage. TV is gonna go on the stand. Bed is gonna be reorientated. Matter of fact, we're going to, going to get a um, Murphy bed so that I'll have room to do some work. And there's a possibility I have like maybe some kind of shelf layout going around the room. I haven't decided fully. I mean, if I really gonna do that, um, but yeah. So and more of the room, everything. This is my table. This is everything. It's here. Oh, I'm into flight sims too. Flight sims and actually auto racing. This is my little rig here. So yeah, I'm into a lot of things. You know, and my computers. This is my computer here. This is the one I actually built. And over there, on the right hand side, that's another computer I built. And behind that TV is what I call the masterpiece, which is not built yet, but it will be. It's going to take some time to do. It's a very large system. So, I mean, you probably see that one day, hopefully. That's going to take a long time to do. So anyway, enough of my showcasing of my uh, my crowded room. Let's let's get started. Demonstrate the tsunami tree's slow motion capability or motor control capability very, very smooth. 
And as you can hear, the engine is very loud. Bring it up a little bit. All right, let's bring it back. I really love the horn on this thing. Very loud. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. I had to turn this off. And actually, you know what? Let me start it up again. The only problem is when you consist the engines, I still haven't really figured this out yet. Uh, when you consist them, um, you're limited to what features you can actually use in the F keys. And F27, F26 basically controls the idle or the RPMs of the engine. It actually also turns it off. Um, or power, or it actually simulates as powering down um, so far in consist mode it doesn't do that you know so I gotta look through the manual and I gotta try to find out if, if it's possible to really do that and try to find what CV does what this that and the third so it's a little bit of pain in the ass but other than that that works out pretty well I mean you know, it's consistent you know it's running good in the consist uh, so now, as for the F7, the F7s are actually not consistent. They are actually programmed to 44, both of them. So all the functions work. The, all the sounds work. Everything works. Uh, not really, that should be the case, especially when it comes to the horn. But that's how I had it set up. So that's, that's going to change anyway, because I'm more or less getting taking out these decoders so all right so i'll power back up again now you're gonna barely hear you're gonna barely hear this engine matter of fact i'll be right back all right right back all right so i have to take the um f3s off the track put on this so we can actually hear the original tsunamis and actually see how it performs compared to the old ones. I mean, excuse me, compared to the new ones. <laughs> uh, I'm silly sometimes, you gotta bear with me. Alright, I'm gonna set this to 44. Alright, and let's power it up.
Alright. Turn on the lights. Now, these are not LED lights, of course. These are the original. This model was um, produced about several years ago. I mean, it's a beautiful model, I have to admit. I can't wait to get all these running. Get the, um, the uh, other three running. I mean, excuse me, the other... Uh, excuse me, the other four running with these two, so it'll be a, a total of six. So let's see. We put in reverse. Hit the horn. And I gotta set the speed steps 128. So let's see what it does at 128. Okay, now, this is at 128. As you can see how fast the locomotives are moving at 128. I mean, they're running okay. Now, before they were a little herky-jerky. Um, because I believe the wheels were a little dirty and the old tsunamis are very sensitive to dirty wheels or dirty track as well alright and they stop once this thing stops on the dime and this was adjusted by the way so this was adjusted some time ago. I mean, it probably needs much, um, probably more tweaking, but like I said, I'm not really going to go through all that. Let's turn on the Mars light. Okay. Okay. okay, now coming back, the engine is a little slower. Which was, to me, it was an issue. Um, when I used to be messing around with these a lot, for some reason, when you first power the track, the engine seemed to have more power. But then if you stop it and then you start it again, then it adjusts itself. Still not as slow as the F3 with the Tsunami 2. Matter of fact, I think the Tsunami 2 uh, motor control was much, much slower. It looked like the wheels have kind of cleaned itself out. So, that's why it's not herky-jerky now. But before it was all herky-jerky. And there's also an emergency light, which is F6. I don't know if you can see it. That's the emergency light. All right, let's turn her off. All right, people. So that's it. Uh, you know, Harold's he's gonna get his engines this week. Um, as you can see, he's running correctly. He's not giving any issues. I mean, Harold's engine has been a real challenge, and I mean a real challenge to get running right, you know, just from a simple um, light 
um, swap or change or whatever, and it turned out to be a major project. You know, but you know, knock on wood, it all turned out or turning out well. So, if you've been watching for this long, I thank you for watching uh, this video, and please like and subscribe. Uh, there's more to come. I mean, this year we're really going to try to push it, try to push more content out there, and attempt to have some more high, higher quality videos. Um, you know, that actually, to be honest with you, that costs more money. <laughs> you know, because I can get camera equipment and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I've been filming on my phone for God knows how long. I don't know, maybe I'll still do it. And you know, still film with my phone. I mean, it's it seen the work. I mean, people like it. You know, so... I mean, I don't have too many complaints about it. And the phone does, actually does an excellent job, to be honest with you. You know, it's easier to, to, to handle. And, you know, even though the camera's a little shaky, but... It's real. It's raw. You know, so... Sometimes, you know, real and raw is actually much better than, um, better than actually have everything rehearsed. I'd rather get things, do things off the cuff. So, yeah, that's a bit. Enough of me rambling. So, again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And there will be more videos to come. Stay tuned for the, um, actually going through learning how to use the um, control cap system that should be really interesting all right thanks for watching